RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very provocative topic today is astronomer Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome, Hugh. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you know, from time to time, I hear this question. I thought it would make a great segment because you had a recent blog post about it, too. And that is, how do we know that our lives aren't some kind of sophisticated computer simulation? Could this be like the movie, The Matrix? Um, I'm hoping you can help us think this through a little bit. I, I don't even know where to begin, so maybe you can help me with that. Well, if you watch the movie, The Matrix, uh, there, there was actually tests there to determine whether they were taking the blue pill or the red pill. And so I begin my article by basically saying, you know, one simple test is uh, just punch someone really hard and, in a sensitive spot and see if they yell, uh, see if there's a pain response, see if there's a bruise there, uh, you know, and does the bruise go away immediately or does it stay? Does the pain remain? But I think a much kinder, I, I'm not recommending that. But a We're much not recommending violence response, in this segment. No, 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 not at all. Uh, uh, is basically to point out, you know, there is strong evidence that we have free will, uh, we have theory of mind, which means we're aware of what's going on in our own mind, mm. and we can affect what's going on in our own mind uh, by our actions and thoughts. Moreover, we have the capacity to detect what other people are feeling and thinking, not always accurately, but the very fact that we have some capacity to do that, uh, what philosophers call theory of mind, indicates that we really are uh, free will beings and as a scientist, I look at the fact that we humans are compulsively curious, not just curious about things that would enhance our well-being, but curious about things that would actually damage our well-being. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think of the exploits that people go to uh, just to explore distant places uh, or go to the moon. People are willing to take quite high risks in order to satisfy their curiosity uh, where there's no personal benefit that comes back to them. Moreover, we humans are compulsively curious about everything, not just about what's going on on our planet, but our solar system, our galaxy, the entire universe, and what might actually be, uh, exist beyond the universe. So this puts us completely outside of any kind of computer simulation, because all computer simulations have boundaries or limits. And we notice is uh, our free will is exercised in such a way uh, that it appears there's no boundaries or limits to how we express our curiosity and how we try to satisfy our curiosity. Well, that's good. And I'm going to kind of summarize a couple of really important points that you made there. One is this issue of self-awareness. It's not only that I see what's happening around me, but I have an awareness of my own internal thoughts that nobody else has access to. And you see that as an evidence of that we live in a, in a real world and not a computer simulation. I think the second thing I heard you talk about there is curiosity, this need to explore and, and um, even sometimes to put ourselves in harm's way because we're curious. And, and so you see that as evidence. I wonder if we could go back though to your first example, the, uh, the kind of the, the almost silly example of, of hitting someone, but that kind of gets to a bigger issue is that I, I'm thinking about historically speaking, there was this error known as Gnosticism in the early church that kind of was this idea of, of denying almost that the physical world was real. It was more like an illusion and what was really real was the spirit realm. This idea of whether or not we're a computer simulation almost strikes me as a form of Gnosticism. Well, it is. And, you know, we came up with that silly example of, say, punching someone in the nose. That's just one of millions of examples we can give of experiments we can perform to determine whether or not we're engaging a real physical world or just an illusion. And we do that, we discover there are laws of physics and that matter is real. We can see it's composed of particles. We recognize energy. So the whole pursuit of science tells us we're engaging a real world. Our science experiments would go in a completely different direction 
if there is no physicality uh, to our existence. So there is a real physical world uh, in spite of what the Gnostics were teaching thousands of years ago. And by the way, the Gnostics are still here. Uh, there are many different cults uh, that are still practicing a Gnostic worldview. I think that one of the distinctive features then that we should probably highlight of the Christian worldview is that we believe in that the physical world is real, that right. it we can study it, we can look at it, we can be curious about it, but that also the spirit realm is real, that the, the realm of the triune God and demons and, and angels in heaven and hell, that, that we hold to both of these realms as being real. That's, that's a very important feature of, of our framework. It is, and as a scientist, I think, you know, we actually have the power to do measurements and experiments that tell us there's not only a reality to the universe, there's a reality to a realm beyond the universe. So the fact that we can explore all the way to the boundaries of the space-time uh, universe, we can see that there's a beginning. It tells us that cause and effect uh, was responsible for bringing the universe into existence. Therefore, there must be causality beyond the universe. I mean, we have the space-time theorems, which rigorously establish there must be a reality beyond this universe. So we're not only able to determine this universe in which we live is real, our bodies are real, our minds are real, but there's a reality beyond uh, what we can uh, measure within this universe. Thanks, Hugh. You. you gave us some good things to think about on this very common question and just giving us your take from an astronomer's perspective. And I want to encourage everyone, go check out Hugh's blog. You can search for Today's New Reason to Believe for a written version of this conversation.